So I was watching the political podcast, The Lotus Eaters, when one of the hosts said this. Let's meme them into releasing the woke Batgirl movie and then not see it. And that's why we're here. Hey everyone, it's the Koopa Man. You want to know the stupidest thing a winning combatant can do? Punish his enemies for ever being enemies to begin with. As I said before the start of this video, this is mainly about the statement made by the host of the Lotus Heat Eaters, Harry, who I'd say has a history of saying really dumb things, but I digress. For context, recently the studio company, Warner Brothers, cancelled a number of projects they'd been working on. Among those were the Woke Batgirl movie, possibly Ezra Miller's Flash movie, and a number of other social justice aligned shows and movies on HBO Max and the like. Warner Brothers CEO, David Zaslav, cited the weakness of Marvel Cinematics Phase 4 and the upcoming Phase 5. Weaknesses me and my friends covered on Tracer's channel, leaving an opportunity to amend mistakes they made with Zack Snyder's DCEU and start anew, at least pertaining to the superhero movies. A number of other changes were also made at Warner Bros. regarding HBO Max, Discovery Plus, and other things such as their original programming, but to be honest, nothing of value was lost. If anything, this was a tremendous move by Zuslav, who sees these woke vanity projects are losing the company money, and the revival of the DC movie franchise into a proper, non-subversive, actual pillar of superhero cinema would be a great thing if done right. I mean, it's sad we're losing Henry Cavill in the process, but that black Superman movie that was going to be directed by ta and Coates seems to be chopped, and I just love it when that particular individual suffers. So then why would we want Warner to lose money by releasing a movie we aren't going to see in the first place and we know would lose them money? Well, I can only think of one reason. Revenge. The problem is that they made that movie to begin with, and because of that, they must be made to suffer. The problem with revenge is twofold. First, is that when one sets out on a quest for revenge, he must first dig two graves. One for his target of his revenge, and the other for himself. What this means is when you focus too much on those who wronged you, you justify your actions no matter how vile, and in the end become just as evil as those who inflicted evil upon you to begin with. Second problem is that during your crusade, there are others at play who would be wronged who turn against you, or enemies whom you punish whom harbors resentment against you, seeing that you as the evildoer and themselves as the righteous victim. Thus the cycle repeats anew. As it has been said, nothing is new under the sun, and everything that has been done will be done again. An example of this that can be seen in history is the concept of revanchism, the French attitude of taking revenge on Germans for their prior injustices. From 1870 to 1871, the French fought and lost a war against Prussia, the state which held power over Germany at the time, and as such had to surrender the Alsace-Lorraine region of territory to Germany. The region had been largely ethnically German anyway, so the people living there saw it as no major loss, just trading one empire for another, but the French saw it as the equivalent of them taking Paris. They resented Germany for many decades, and would even teach their children the evils of the Germans and how they were all barbarians and savages, and would hold it against them in all diplomatic relations from then on. This would be a large reason why they were eager to join World War I on behalf of their fair-weather friends the Russians. The Russians were the protectors of the Slavs, so they intervened on behalf of Serbia against the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was backed by, you guessed it, Germany. So France saw it as an excuse to get revenge for Alsace Lorraine, and in the end, they were on the winning side. Then it came time to write the Treaty of Versailles to end the war. While Great Britain was content to be gracious in their victory, Russia was going through a bit of identity crisis, and Woodrow Wilson was jacking off somewhere in the background watching Birth of a Nation, the French saw themselves in an ample opportunity to take revenge on Germany. And they did it by instituting punishments against the German Empire and the German people which broke their economy, removed their government for a French-backed, decadent and toothless government acting as a tyrant over the people of Germany who were generally suffering, and from the suffering bred ample resentment for any snake oil salesman or failed art student with a chip on his shoulder to take advantage of. And we all know how that ended. Sure, comparing the politics of the world wars to some media companies may be a bit of a stretch, but the same principles apply. Revenge is always revenge, and it never goes anywhere good. Especially with the case of media companies, where everything at the end of the day is influenced by consumer dollars. An example of this being the exodus of several right-leaning fans from the Warhammer 40k franchise to a franchise known as Battletech, or at least, lore readers jumping from one franchise to another. Games Workshop has, like most popular media, catered to woke activists more than a few times, 
driving away some of the more politically inclined fans. However, they didn't lose all that much money from them, and a number of those who left said they were going to go to Battletech. Then, more recently, Battletech canceled one of its more well-known and beloved franchise authors over accusations by some trans activists, leading many of the right-wingers who exodized from Warhammer to Battletech to question why they even bothered to begin with, or why their new hobby isn't catering to them like they expected. This was a movement largely pushed by the YouTuber Razorfist, who, while I do have a great admiration for, his motivations for this were less politically inclined and more hipster-ish, but I digress. If the new fans were not spending any money, you gotta remember most of the people who exodized were lore junkies and you can get most of that on the fandom wikis. And the woke activists, at least according to social media, were? It comes down to this, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Only one group is actually showing them that they're buying the product and giving them profits. The others are just faceless jump balls from Warhammer who have yet to buy actual product. Sure, it may be easy to cater to these new customers, but the lefties who they believe are already giving them money would likely flee. And the two in the bush, meaning the righties, would probably not be as readily available to give their money to the company that committed original sin. It's a lose-lose scenario no matter how you cut it. And the sad thing is, at the end of the day, the end goal of the company is to make money. If they think the activists are giving them money to wear their brand as a skin suit and the right-wingers are not, why would the company listen to the right-wingers? And thus we see the folly of boycotting. But turning back to Warhammer 40k, they recently announced that their Space Marines, the Adeptus Astartes, will always be as the lore wrote and they always were. Male only. Which pissed off the lefties they had in their hand, and a number of wo former Warhammer players, such as the Lotus Eaters host and owner Carl Benjamin, started to actually buy their products again. Sometimes a company will do the gamble and it'll pay off, at least for a while, and those who are returning will rediscover what they loved about the franchise and pass that down to their children, and their children will pass it down to their children, because at the end of the day, it's far better to just enjoy things that are good instead of worrying about pure spiraling politics. It's something that the rights, the moderates, and even some liberals can agree on. Make good quality shows and movies and people will come and see them. Trying to cater to those only concerned about purity, be they on the left or the right, will only push away the middle and lose money. Will good quality products come from Warner Brothers New Direction, the new Justice League Cinematic Universe? Time will tell, but it's better to be hopeful than to nitpick them over unrelated bullshit. The culture war is entering a precipice where we're starting to see things go our way. This news about Warner Brothers and Games Workshop affirming their dedication to their lore is a sign of things to come. They need to be shown this is what we want. We can't punish them for all eternity. That doesn't accomplish anything. It's a simple, mutually beneficial transaction. They provide us with things we enjoy, entertaining products and fun, exciting worlds and characters without political nonsense. We, in exchange, give them our money. Everyone wins. Show them that it's more profitable to be entertaining than to be woke. And please, for the love of God, don't be a French revanchist. History has shown it never works out well for anyone involved. Besides, isn't there enough negativity in the world as it is? Sheesh, you pessimists make me sick. Smile for once! It's not like we're about to get eaten by space bugs. It's been the Koopa Man. Game on.